Tower of Perfection book came about when Karen Mahoney, uh, the wonderful uh, magic realist press and the Tower of Prague and Bohemian Gothic and many other great projects, just wrote me and asked me if I was interested in doing a book of fairy tales that they would illustrate. And what happened was that she was working on the fairy tale Tarot, which is absolutely marvelous, beautiful deck, gorgeously produced. And I actually wrote the introduction for the text of it. So her mind was on fairy tales as an art form, and fairy tales are one of my favorite things. And I've also used tarot cards to make stories, to create stories, um, over many years now, going back probably 20, 25 years. And so uh, this was a dream for me, to write stories. Fairy tales in which the tarot appears in some of them. And the Tower of Perfection is, in fact, the title of the first story. And it's a deck that someone in that story creates. And then it kind of weaves through the rest of the book, not in every story. Every story has some kind of divination, not necessarily tarot, but there's some divinatory aspect of the story. Most of the stories have some kind of talking head. Head may be on a stick, it may be an angel, it may be the head of a dead child, but there's some kind of talking head. And those themes weave through the stories. And then in the last two stories, um, called Simon Wisdom and Master Matthias, the Tower of Perfection reappears and somehow ties together various aspects of the previous stories, which seem to be totally separate from each other. So it all kind of weaves together in, I think, a very nice way. And actually, Master Matthias came about in an interesting way. I collect fountain pens. And I buy pens on the internet, antique pens, sometimes 100 years old or more. And one of them I was offered, it was a beautiful gold pen, and the person selling it said there was a monogram on it, an inscribed name. And they didn't ask what the name was, because I deliberately don't do that. And when it came, it was beautifully lettered and said, M. Matthias. And I immediately, in my mind, came up with the name Master Matthias, and thought of a sorcerer who falls from grace and has to be redeemed. And that was the last story. And it was incredibly difficult to write. It took me probably two or three months to write that story. I kept thinking of giving up, and yet it just stuck with me. And at the end, I'm so happy it did, because as I say, it really brought together everything in the rest of the book. So even though the book is a collection of stories, it's also an entire whole in its own fabric. To me, fairy tales are not necessarily stories for children. They're an art form all by themselves. And I think people confuse that a lot. Because some of the Grimm's tales, people say, well, these aren't very good for children. They're too dark and grisly. And they weren't necessarily meant for children. One of my favorite Grimm's tales is called Godfather Death. And it's very clearly an adult folk tale. It's got nothing to do with children. And I actually use it as the basis of my novel, Godmother Night, which won the World Fantasy Award some years back. And Godmother Night is a completely contemporary story about two women and their daughter and death, who appears in the story as a kind of somewhat frumpy and pretentious middle-aged woman named Mother Night. And so I've worked with fairy tales for a long time. And in this, in this book, The Tower of Perfection, some of the fairy tales are really children's stories. There's a story called Caroline in the Morning about a little girl who beats the devil. In that story, there's a wonderful bit that I do in which uh, the devil used to collect souls in jars. And he still has all these jars, but they're empty now, because now he keeps souls in his hard drive. And so what Carolina has to, what Caroline, the main character of the story, has to do is um, really destroy the devil's hard drive and then put a virus into his computer. So when he tries to restore the hard drive, the whole thing crashes. And that's how she beats the devil. Lots of other things happen in the story as well. So that's in a kind of children's story. There's a story called The Girl Who Went to the Rich Neighborhood, and it acts a fairy tale. Actually, it's one of two stories that were written earlier. And in that one, it's a quest fairy tale. And yet it's set in a kind of surreal, modern city in which um, this poor girl in the rich neighborhood wants to go to the mayor and increase the welfare payments and ends up you know, destroying the mayor's power and getting all power for the poor people and so on. But then other stories, like The Souls in the Trees, which was directly inspired by tarot cards, that story is very adult, very dark. It's really kind of dark horror. But in that story, there's something, there's two things that are of significance for my work, and I 
other people's interests. One is that Dr. Apollo appears in the story. And Dr. Apollo is a creation as an alternate identity of mine that I've used of a number of others in an exercise in which I have people create their charlatan fortune teller identities. And the other thing about that story is that in it I came up with what I would say is my contribution to language, which is a collective noun for spirits, as in pride of lions, flock of geese. So for me, the collective noun is a splendor of spirits, and they're referred to as the splendor, and I'm very proud of that. One is Simon Wisdom, in which a woman talks to squirrels, and then later on the squirrels appear to her son after she's dead. And the other... Um, is the end story again, Master Matthias, in which the squirrels, those particular squirrels reappear. And what's amusing to me is that this is my own invention. I just came up with them out of nowhere. Well, actually, there's a scene in which the squirrels appear to um, Simon's father, the, Rebecca's husband, and when Rebecca is dying. And those squirrels, and probably the whole concept of the talking squirrels, were inspired by this very strange thing that happened to me. My cousin died some years back, and it was a very sad death. It was very tragic in our family. And the day that she died, and I got the message she had died, and I was preparing to go to New York to be there for her funeral, I was in my kitchen, and I heard this sound at the back door. I looked out my window, and there was a squirrel, a black squirrel, which I'd never seen before in my life, and it was scratching at the door as if to come in. So I included that idea with, with two squirrels in the stories, and then just after that, I found out that there's this thing in the tarot world now called the Happy Squirrel, in which various decks like Cat Black's Touchstone Tarot include a card called the Happy Squirrel. And in that deck, the Happy Squirrel card shows a squirrel with a medium diviner, and she has a crystal ball in front of her. And this could very well totally be the image of Rebecca Wisdom in the story Simon Wisdom. So it was a wonderful confluence across worlds of people having somehow the same image. The squirrel image has come into our consciousness. On the table, on this trunk, not a table really, are some cards from the Shining Tribe deck, which is a deck of my creation. And these are actually, these are archival prints of the original art, so it's a rare um, limited edition that I've been selling for some years. And I put them out because the Shining Tribe deck, which I did, has the same kind of elements as my stories. There's elements of fantasy, but also elements that draw upon the wisdom of ancient traditions, the Tyro tradition, but in a radically different kind of way. There's folk tales. Um, and I also have the next, this is the card of death. And death is a very significant character in fairy tales. And in many fairy tales, the death appears in one way or another, as it does in some of the stories of Tyro perfection. And then this is a card called the Ace of Trees, Ace of Wands, in which it shows there's a sort of red fetus and golden light underneath the earth, and the umbilical cord changes into the tree of life among the stars. And that is kind of the image and feeling of some of the stories, if not actually in content. <laughs> 